For some of you that follow my social media, you may have seen this picture. I referenced the TV sitcom from the 70s called Sanford and Son. <laughs> and this furniture just wasn't coming inside. It was definitely a rescue. It had been sitting in water. But look at this woodwork. The furniture came to me from a client who isn't quite sure she wants it done or not. <laughs> she wonders whether it's worth keeping. She did pay for the delivery to my place and for someone who uh, was outside that I paid to take off all the upholstery. Since it had had mold on it, that's why I didn't want it to come inside before we got rid of all that. Because of the wet condition it had been in, some of the glue deteriorated because all these carvings were made of slices of wood. Therefore, a lot of it fell apart. So I used baggies and identified the yellow chair, the red chair, the couch. The couch is sort of in a pile. <laughs> The puzzle piecing began and I had to wear a mask every time I touched it because in case there was any leftover uh, mold on there, I used TSP and I used bleach um, and vinegar water to get rid of anything else that remained. So little tiny piles were being made and disposed of and I had to make sure that all of that stuff was gone before I could proceed. For the most part, I was able to piece the puzzle pieces together um, with the help of Lexi at my shop. She um, is good at piecing. So a lot of cleaning was happening. And then I also thought, you know, like I said, one piece was really missing from that chair. So I used amazing mold putty. And this kind of didn't go as planned. But I may try it one more time, um, or I may end up going through the couch pile of parts and see if there's a similar part that got mixed up. It was a kind of a mess, so um, we did the best we could. But yeah, all those tiny little tacks, they took three or four tacks on top of each other. And then, of course, they got a little rusted. So that really... It's just such a job to get them all out. So between using a screwdriver and one of those tack removal tools and uh, pliers, just keep working after it. So um, I made the molds. I made one for the right side of the chair and one for the left side using uh, the the other chair, which was still in that area in good condition. So amazing mold putty. Uh, you just mix the two parts together and you just knead them together until they form um, a consistent color and then you can mold it in and that's what you get. And this is the molding process. I'm doing the other side. So like I said, this kind of didn't work out as planned because eh, there really weren't high sides to the mold enough to hold my resin in and I also tried clay and the clay really wasn't good to use in this situation. My original thought was to make two amazing casting resin sides and then use the clay in the middle and I might still go back to that but the first try was definitely a bust and I'm going to have to go back and try again. Now this video is going to end up being a two-part series simply because the work was way overwhelming, more than I thought it would be. Um, but I am going to show you what my color inspiration is and hopefully get just a little bit of paint on here. Get it cleaned up enough so that you can see the direction that I'm going. I'm totally thrilled with it. So my client is 90% sure that she wants to take it, but she's not 100% sure. So either way, she gifted me with this furniture, so she may buy it back or um, I have it to sell. Um, I'm pretty 
excited about the plans for it. And I will share those with you. I'll share my inspiration. Um, so you can see how much I fussed with all these little pieces and parts. <laughs> So I'm speeding through the tragedy of the molding. I did think to myself, oh, this stuff's going to run through. So I made little troughs, but I think just my troughs weren't big enough. I need to work on that um, and get that down. Maybe using more of the molding material would be the best thing to do. Not 100% sure, but obviously I need to work on getting that gap in that piece of furniture filled. Normally, I really love working with this product. I think it was my execution um, and lack of uh, forward thinking that kind of resulted in the failure on this one. So here goes nothing, the amazing casting resin, uh, pour and pour out. I've had people tell me that they like it when I include my failures in my videos as well as my successes. So here's a big failure. See it leaking all over the table? But you can also see those spots where it starts to harden. There's Lexi helping me. We're both masked up. And that's about as far as we got. Now I want to show you some of the inspiration. This is what I'm kind of going for, what I have in mind. These photos were taken from Pinterest. Here's something I did for my bridal rentals before, and this had ornate carving, and I'm kind of going along these lines, only in a different colorway, and I'm also looking to put these patterns on the boards. Um, not necessarily these patterns, but these are a few that I have in mind. There are some flat panels on the, the frame, that I think are perfect opportunities for this rose chintz paint inlay from IOD that takes the personality of whatever color is underneath. So stick with me next week, come back and see if we can go from this to something that looks a little more like this. And then keep in mind our Halloween challenge is coming up, hosted by Lubby Jubbly Furniture, and that will be taking place on the 24th of October. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at levintagedecor.company and on Instagram we're levintagedecor and on Facebook we're levintagedecoraltuna. Stay well.